everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new All Elite Wrestling action figure review on the brand new AEW Unrivaled Collection Series number four, Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy figures. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have been waiting for a re-release of Kenny Omega since we got the Series one. You know, we were really hyped on the Series one, but the Series one did have the paler skin tone. Everybody was pretty bummed out about it. While we were super excited for it, we still enjoyed the figure. We were pretty bummed that it turned out being a little bit more pale than we wanted. You know, that whole first wave, due to some COVID-related issues, we couldn't get the right skin tone, but here we are in Series 4, guys, and we finally have our better skin tone, Kenny Omega. Beautiful looking figure. Can't wait to crack him out of the packaging. And then we have our first look at an AEW Matt Hardy figure, which I'm really excited for. His first figure in AEW, and I think we are in for a treat. I also have Cody. I was going to do Kenny and Cody. I decided to do Kenny and Matt Hardy, because I know a lot of people are going to see how this Matt Hardy compares to other Matt Hardys we've received, and I think this is going to be an epic review, guys. So here's the front of the packaging. You got Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy in all of their glory, both uh, pretty pretty crazy right here on the front. You got their names in gold plate right there, Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. You got the AEW logo there, both figures there, number 28 and number 31. On the back of the packaging, an image of Omega and an image of Matt Hardy. This is a Kenny Omega from All Out, and the Matt Hardy is from Dynamite, and this might actually be Matt Hardy's debut on Dynamite. You got the rest of the figures in the wave, which we will take a look at. You got another AEW logo on the side and that pretty much does it for our AEW Series 4 Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy guys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and crack the Elite Champion and Woken Matt out of their packaging. All right, guys, so here is Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy out of the packaging. One thing you may notice immediately about the Matt Hardy, though, is his height. Now, his height does seem to be a little bit taller than I would like. I think Matt Hardy is 6'1". I could be wrong about that. Okay, I found conflicting arguments that says he's 6'1", and some say he's 6'2", but I know that Kenny Omega is six foot. so I guess, I don't know, it's not the biggest deal in the world. They scale pretty decent. If you want to shorten him up, maybe I, can, I, I might can figure out something, but until until that time, we're going to have to deal with it nonetheless. But here is Matt Hardy and Kenny Omega out of the packaging, guys. What we're going to do first is dive into Kenny Omega's accessories and Kenny Omega, and then we will flip it over and do Matt Hardy's accessories and Matt Hardy. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Kenny Omega's accessories. So getting into Omega's accessories, guys, starting out first with his entrance vest that we get. This is our second Kenny Omega unrivaled figure to come with his entrance gear. This is a vest instead of the long entrance gear that we got with series number one, but it is a nice black color. You got some good sculpting going on on the one shoulder. It does have the wing draping down for the one-winged angel. Really like that. You do have some detailed coloration going on on there for the feathers coming off. It's in black and like a light gray, I guess you will. It's a very like, I don't want to say flimsy because that makes it sound kind of weak or something because it's not. It's not weak at all. It's very strong. However, it is a softer pliable rubber so that way it does come off the figure better. So I do like this a lot. You guys already saw it on the figure. It fit the figure well. I like it. This is actually a rubber accessory. I don't mind because it comes off so easily and it does not hinder articulation. So this is very nice. I am glad that we got this entrance vest and I will actually use this compared to the other ones that we've gotten in the past. So this is a really nice accessory. Outside of that guys, we actually have interchangeable hands. He comes with mic holding hands or your standard grappling hands, which are a good skin tone. They match up very well. And then we also get shooter hands and like a I like this can be the off hand, you know, like this one's shooting and then this one's back here like this. But I also feel like if we had a shooter for this hand, it would also work because this kind of reminds me of like the pre hand, if that makes sense. So, you guys know when he has his elbow bent like this before he does the shooter, I feel like this would be a great hand to do that, and then when he comes down it would change to this, if that makes sense. Almost like, you know, you're building up the gun, and then the gun's revealed. So that's kind of what I thought too, but skin tone looks good. Get out of here, you piece of you piece of shit. Anyways, I'm really glad we got shooter hands, and I'm also glad for this other entrance hand. I just wish that we got a, we could have gotten a left shooter hand, and then a right hand similar to this. So two sets of each, or a set of each would have been really cool to pair with our mic holding hands, but that is pretty much it for Kenny Omega's accessories, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into the cleaner himself. So diving into Kenny Omega, guys, starting out at the top with this head sculpt. Now, I will say this head sculpt is significantly better than his last one. I'm really enjoying it. Usually, I'm not one for screaming expressions, but I think they capture the likeness very well. I like the hair sculpt as well. I think it looks like Kenny Omega, and it looks like Kenny Omega's hair. You got the entrance head there with him yelling. Great expression. Beard looks really good. Skin 
tone is just absurdly better than the first go around so that looks really good you do get the blonde highlights throughout the hair as we spin them around here again really nice sculpt and everything like that we are also going to do an articulation standpoint if you guys are interested but it is the exact same torso arms all that good stuff that we got with his first go round don't worry we will do comparisons all that stuff but this skin tone looks perfect for me for Kenny Omega white wrist tape looks really good on it as well I'm digging the arm veins and everything I feel like you can see all this detail a lot better than you could with the fleshed out or the really pale flushed out skin tone that we got on his other figure moving down into the tights guys now this is an attire that he wore for a really long time on AEW television and me and my brother always talked about how much he wore this attire we're like we're gonna get new Kenny gear we're gonna get new Kenny gear and he would always come out in this gear and I must say that this gear in figure form looks a hundred times better than it does in real life if if that's even possible but I think it's because they really saturated it they really brought out the details in it and the real version is actually airbrushed so in figure form it just looks a lot better I love all the navy and the graphics and the the yellows and the silvers the Omega logo here on the crotch now I don't know the inspiration behind this I always thought it was kind of Terminator looking but I don't think it was Terminator inspired I'm not exactly sure of the exact inspiration behind the gear but it looks badass all the Omega logos and the knee pads and the navy and the silver and all the graphics going on on the butt and the metallic and the mechanical stuff going on looks sick as shit I really love this figure I think it looks absolutely fantastic kick pads look really outstanding I'm loving this like off-white gray on the outline of the kick pads as well it makes everything stand out and I really like it my overall thoughts on the figure guys is just I'm really impressed I love what we got going on right here but before we move into the articulation standpoint guys let's get into some Kenny Omega figure comparisons so for your Kenny Omega figure comparisons, guys, starting out first, we do have the new AEW and Rival Collection Series 4 up next to the Series 1, and you guys can just see the skin tone. Like, I just feel like, look how many strides AEW and Jazz wears and everybody involved have taken since the Series 1 release. Like, I mean, dude, it's not even, color. look at that. Look how nice that looks in skin tone, man. Way more realistic, way better likeness. I mean, just absurd. And just imagine how good they're going to get. Like, wait till we get a determined straight face Kenny or whatever, or just, even if you just repainted this, which we are going to take a look at in a second. It's just immaculate, man. Super excited for more figures to come for Kenny, but man, they have absolutely nailed this Series 4. And if you guys also wanted to see what it looked like up next to the ringside exclusive AEW exclusive ring, Kenny, here is that one. And I know a lot of people are going to want to see what this torso and head sculpt look like on this figure and also that figure, so we will go ahead and do that right now. And that right there looks absolutely fantastic, man. Holy crap. Now, one thing you probably want to know is uh, how loose is the torso or whatever it's really tight it feels really good on there you're not gonna have to worry about it you know being loose as you know loosey-goosey if you put your series 4 torso and head sculpt onto the series 1 legs it's not gonna be bothersome however if you put the series 1 on the 4 it is pretty loosey-goosey I don't know who would want to do that anyways but if you were thinking about doing that it is uh it's probably a no-go they probably fixed that to make sure that you know the uh the torso here would fit really good because they knew that people would sw you know interchange though so shout out to Jazzwares and Jeremy and Matt Magic and all of those over at Jazzwares for doing that because Jesus, man, that looks that looks absolutely incredible. And if you guys want to see what this looks like over here, then uh, we'll do that right now as well. And yeah, again, just much better, man. I mean, like words can't even describe it. Huge shout out to Magic, Jeremy, the whole design team over there, dude. Fantastic job on the Kenny. I love the way the Series 4 torso and head sculpt looks like on the ringside exclusive legs. I mean, we already knew that it would look that good, but damn, bro. Just seeing it in person, I need more of this Kenny. I wish I had more of them. That's excellent stuff right there. You got a little something special going on there young man actually you got a lot of something special going on there young man but let's get it back to normal and then if you guys wanted to see the mjf torso with repainted series one head sculpt look like up next to the series four here is what that looked like in the height comparison and all of that different stuff this definitely looks a lot better than the series one back there with the better skin tone and everything like that but uh, i guess i can do a head, a head swap real quick and see what this head sculpt looks over here if anybody wants to repaint the series one and put it on their four and there's what that would look like and uh i think it looks pretty damn good. So yeah, if you guys wanted to do that, I think that is something you may want to you know, check into. And then here's what the Series 1 with the MJF torso and the AEW Series 4 head sculpt looks like on the Series 1 legs. So there you go. There's another little comparison or shot for you if you guys want to try that. And for one last comparison guys, here is the new AEW 4 Kenny Omega up next to the Series 2 Hangman Page and the Series 2 John Moxley with the fixed leg height. And that looks really damn good. I love seeing these guys up next to each other, especially since updating the Moxley 
Moxley's height. That looks pretty John Brown good. I like the way that looks and everything's good and cool and dandy and uh, let's move the hell on to the articulation. So for Kenny's articulation guys, it's pretty much the same as the last one but you can look down a little bit. Not really up because of the hair over here. The crunch is still really damn good as we know from the AEW figures. You get the, uh, it does go above 90 right there. He does have good bicep swivel. He has the double jointed elbows which are just, just, I, I can't even describe how great they are. You do get di upper diaphragm pivot and you can spin the waist around a little bit. If you go more than that, it will pop off but you can reverse it if you wanted to turn him all the way around for some weird reason. You do get 360 here and you get a ball hinge so he can go back and forth like so. He is on ball joints so he can do the splitsies. He has upper thigh cut. He has the double jointed knees which are absolutely wonderful. He does have boot cut unlike Pac from series 3 which was just mm, disappointment. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. And then last but not least, I know a lot of people were worried about the ankles from Series 1. You know, they're really loose. The figure's really hard to stand. Well, I'm very happy to report that his ankle pivot is a lot tighter this time. It feels a lot better, and he stands much easier. Like, he's not gonna fall over. They tightened it up. It looks nice. It feels nice. It's really good, and you can point that down if you want. So, shout out to the design team and everybody over there for paying attention to the needs and wants of the community and fixing the Kenny Omega issues that we have with Series 1. This Series 4 is super badass, and I'm so happy to have it. So getting into Matt Hardy's accessories, guys, we do also get, I mean, I, first of all, let's cover this. He comes with a lot of stuff. He comes with a ton of stuff, which is really cool to see with this Matt Hardy figure. He comes with his entrance coat, if you, oh my god. Like I was saying, he comes with his entrance coat here, which is a nice material. You get some good straps on here. The graphics look really good. I, I think it fits good on the figure. You guys already saw how it looked on the figure, but he has his nice print going down in the red. You know, we never got a red attire from Mattel, so I am happy to see that we got the darker maroonish red color and black attire from Matt Hardy, so this is really nice to see. But you got his claps in the front, the straps, and all that good stuff. You also have to come with Vanguard 1, and you love to see this. This is actually Vanguard 1's second figure from an action figure company. So Vanguard 1 has more figures than a lot of people. Nonetheless, you guys already know we got a Vanguard 1 from Mattel, and I don't even know where my Vanguard 1 went. I looked all over the place. I spent 30 minutes trying to find it so that I could pair it with this Vanguard 1, but you guys can see the details like the camera down here and the wings and everything. The only thing is, is the wings do not spin, so that may turn some people off. You know, that may upset some people. Not the biggest deal to me since we have the one from Mattel that does spin, but I don't have, I don't, I don't know where it went. I looked everywhere, so I, I don't know. Hopefully, I can find that soon, but Vanguard 1 looks really, really good, and you can't have Vanguard 1 without our hologram of Matt Hardy, which comes right here in this solid red, which is super sick, and what makes it even more sick, guys, is look how thick this is. This is almost like a bust. You could, uh, I have a few creative ideas with this regarding a Matt Hardy bust, but you pretty much get a casted version of Matt Hardy's head sculpt because this articulates, and you can pop this off like a AEW head sculpt, and I'm about to test right now now if you can put it on the figure. So there is that, and then you can pop that in there, okay? So it is a little bit loosey-goosey, but this head sculpt will go onto the figure itself. So that's insane. So you have the Matt Hardy bust with his coat on, and then you have the Matt Hardy head sculpt that, again, looks like a casted version, but it's all thick and stuff. Like, you could paint this up and put that and have an extra Matt Hardy head sculpt. You just have to tighten it up, but it does port into the drone here, and like that. So it ports into the drone, and then you can set that there, and he can cut promos like like, yes, brother Nero, I knew you'd come, and all that good stuff. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff with the Matt Hardy drone, Vanguard 1, the hologram, really sick stuff, but not only that, guys, I need to put Matt Hardy's head back on. Not only that, guys, you can get a ton of interchangeable hands, so you get a set of these, like, Yas hands, or, like, reaching out to cast a spell. He opens his arms wide, and he's, like, coming for you, there you go, like, yeah, so you got those hands, look, which look really cool, like a cutting nice promo hands as well. You do get a pointer finger, of course. You gotta have a pointing finger. And I guess if you really wanted to, you might could make that a shooter hand, but it is different than the Kenny Omega hand, which has a straight thumb, so that is different. Also, he comes with a left fist that does, the tape also has sculpt on it. It's not just painted on. The tape is sculpted on the hands, which is a really nice touch, but he also comes with regular mic holding hands, as well as his uh, signature hands and fist on the left. So that is really badass. Really good stuff with Matt Hardy, man. You get a ton of accessories with a ton of playability on it, and I am enjoying all the stuff we got here, but that does it for Matt Hardy's accessories. So diving into Matt Hardy, guys, starting out at the top of the head sculpt, very nice expression going on. I definitely see the likeness to Hardy.
Hardy. I think it is a good head sculpt, and I think they will improve upon it. I think it looks like Matt. Possibly looks like an even younger Matt, like, but I think they did a really good job on it. I love the red curl here, or the red touch-up, or the red, the red highlight. Couldn't think of the damn word for a minute. Anyways, you got the short sucker mom style haircut right here. Nice beard going on. Spins around 360 style. He's also on a ball hinge, or all of them are on ball hinge, so he can look down really, really well. I'd love to see that. Nonetheless, going down into the torso, I think this is the Chris Jericho torso. I could be wrong, but I like it. I think it works out great. You know, they are action figures, so they're going to be a little bit over-exaggerated in the torso section. I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks okay. I think these are the same arms that we've gotten on MJF and Chris Jericho. I'm pretty sure they have the same arms. I could be wrong about that, but the black wrist tape looks really good. And another thing I noticed is that, you know, that one hand has the tape sculpted on it, but the rest have paint. So I thought that was weird. It'd look really cool if they sculpted that onto the lower forearms. One of the issues I also find with the AEW figures sometimes is the elbows are a bit flimsy. I don't know if that's because of the material that these joints are made out of, but I would like it, you know, that just feels flimsy to me, and I feel like that could snap or something, so I think, you know, updating that or playing around with different plastics or something like that would be something that, I don't know, if you guys had any issues with that, let me know down in the comment section below, but it bothers me when it, like, flails out like that. Not all of them are that way, though, which is kind of weird, but the crotch looks good. You do get some sculpt right here on the front, kind of like Buddy Murphy crotches. You got the belt sculpted on there and everything. Nice buckle detail going on. These are all sculpted on there. Reminds me a lot of the John Moxley pants. They are different, but the wrinkles and the colors and the, the black and red attire looks really clean to me. I'm not having any crazy graphic malfunctions or anything. Lower legs are tight right there. I felt like his pants were supposed to be wider, but I don't know exactly. It still looks really good. Shoes look really good as well. I feel like they might be a tad bit oversized possibly. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below as we zoom out right here, and you guys can see down below. It's, I don't think it's as bad as Adam Hangman Page, but I feel like they are a little bit big, and I'll play around with that, see what I can do, but not Nonetheless, I like the Matt Hardy. I think it feels good in the hand and everything like that. I've enjoyed the posability that I've gotten out of it and the way he's posed around and stuff like that. I guess we can knock out some articulation while we're here since I'm already posing him around, but you guys already said he can look down a lot, so that's really cool. The uh, torso does get a really good bend right there, so I think any stuff like that will look good. He can shift a little bit here. More than 90, you do get the full rotation there. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows like we talked about. Same hinge here and the rotation through. 360. He can waist swivel a little bit. He is on ball joints, so you get the full little thing there. He can kick forward really, really good, not back as much because of the butt cheek flap. You do get the upper thigh cut, the double jointed knee, which is excellent, and then he doesn't have lower boot rotation, but he does have the foot that can rotate a little bit, and the foot can look down and up, and he has ankle pivot that is not loose, so that is very nice to see. And one thing I'm noticing from the front, his shoes look like Mattel John Cena shoes. That's what it, like, is reminding me of. Like, the sculpt is very similar. Nonetheless, I'm liking what I got going on with this Matt Hardy figure, man. Really good stuff right there. Well, let's get into some Matt Hardy figure comparisons. So, for your Matt Hardy figure comparisons, guys, you can see the AEW Series 4 in the middle. We also have the Network Spotlight Mattel Elite on the right, and then we have his WrestleMania Elite on the left with a head swap, I'm pretty sure. But, nonetheless, you guys can see what we're talking about with the height. I feel like he stands just a tad bit too tall. Not the biggest deal. And the Mattel one could be slightly wrong. So, I don't know. I think it definitely would help it to shrink it just a size or just, just lower him just a little bit, but nonetheless, still like the way he looks and everything like that. I also have some other Matt Hardys that we can compare him to down here. So, also have the Epic Moments one, which was his first return Elite once we, uh, you know, he came back to WWE and has since left. And then the other one we have is his Elite 58 figure and uh, there you go again. So, really nice takes on it from both companies. I think they all look great. Matt Hardy figures are really fun to collect. I have a, actually a ton of Matt Hardy Elites and figures so I enjoy them a lot. But one thing you guys may also want to see is what this AEW mat looks like up next to a Mattel Jeff. So here is a Mattel Jeff and again he does stand taller and so they don't perfectly scale well. I feel like you know these definitely scale better but there is the AEW mat up next to the Mattel Jeff. And then if you guys want to see what Matt looked like up next to some other AEWs here is John Moxley. And then if you guys wanted to see what he looked like up next to Kenny even though we already pretty much did that there is that. And then and we also have some others. If you guys want to see what Matt looked like up next to MJF, then here you go. Again, taller than him. And then I guess one that is pretty significant at the moment, we have Matt up next to Hangman Page. And they're roughly about the same height. Matt may stand just a tad bit taller, but there's Adam Hangman Page up next to our new Matt Hardy figure. And that is it for your Matt Hardy figure comparisons. But I think that 
pretty much does it for this 2-in-1 AEW Series 4 Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy review. Guys, thank you so very much for checking out the review. If you guys would like to grab these, I think they're still on pre-order or they may be on back order on Ringside Collectibles. Guys, go over there. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% if you'd like to order them. If you're watching this review later and they're no longer on Ringside Collectibles, you may be able to cop them on eBay. You may be able to cop them somewhere else. But Ringside Collectibles, guys, if you'd like to grab them anywhere else, huge shout out to Ringside for making this video possible and hooking us up with the AEW Series number 4. Definitely use promo code MDTOYS when shopping over there on all the wrestling figures. But overall thoughts, this Kenny Omega, I mean, this pretty much describes it, right? Series 4, Series 1. I mean, just take him out, Brad. V-Trigger to the skull. The Series 4 is definitely better. Highly recommended over the Series 1. I wouldn't even look at the Series 1 anymore unless you have two of these and you want to put this torso and head sculpt over here because these attires are super fire. But uh, yeah, this Series 4 puts the rest to shame. And the Matt Hardy for the first incarnation of Matt Hardy that we have here. I like it. Maybe a slight too tall, but I think for your AEW roster, it is a must-have. And I, I think it's great. I like the attire. I love the accessories. Tons of great accessories and much playability. The entrance jacket is nice, and I think it's going to be interesting when we get down to our ranking. We're going to rank Series 4 when we get all the reviews done, guys. But also, if you guys would like to see what, uh, what the Kenny Omega looks like with the AEW World Championship, I forgot to do this, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this real quick. So there you go. There's the AEW Championship on the Kenny Omega, and that looks absolutely beautiful. I love the way that looks. That's absolutely terrific. And then if you guys wanted to see what the Elite Championship looks like for the MDT Pick Fed, I honestly don't know what the hell I'm going to use because I don't like that he's just angry the whole time. You know, I don't like that he's, you know, yelling the whole time. Need like a determined Kenny, but there's the Elite Championship on the Kenny Omega, and that looks really badass too. Been champion for 60 years, it seems like. Nonetheless, that does it for the AEW Series 4 Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy review, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get into our random shout-out before we get out of here. I feel like we've been here about a year and a half now. So this shout-out is going to go to Nitro John one who says, here's your winning percentage. The percent from WrestleMania 36 to now, besides the Elimination Chamber, is 64%. Not rounded is 63.95. The fraction is 55 out of 86. You're welcome. And then I have another person who says 54 out of 81, right, from WrestleMania 36 to Royal Rumble 2021. So they got different predictions. I don't know if somebody missed a show possibly or maybe that I don't know if they fixed it I, it I don't know what happened somewhere along the lines something's mixed up but Nitro John 1 and RSM Figures. Huge shout out to them for calculating the winning percentage. I really appreciated that. Huge shout out to those guys for taking the time to go through that and uh, answering the challenge. That's pretty damn badassery, but that's going to do it for the shout out, guys. Thank you so very much. I think that, you know, 66% are around there. Every two out of three is pretty good. I also threw some ish at the wall sometimes with those predictions, so I knew they weren't going to happen where I could have easily improved it, maybe up to 70, 75%, but nonetheless, appreciate the combat, guys. I'm getting the hell out of here. Let's get ready for some Elimination Chamber and uh, AEW Series 4 so far is super fire. Don't cross the line. You cross the line, I've been